Recovery is actually one of those uh, topics that is the least studied in terms of academia. So we look at why disasters happen, we look at the risks associated with disasters, and although there is a body of work on recovery, what we tend to do is look at the, the fine scale recovery. How do neighborhoods, how do streets return? Is there a successful um, way that these streets or neighborhoods return? If we can identify the patterns, if we can understand what leads to a successful recovery, then we can minimize that post-disaster trauma that happens. We employ geospatial technology, specifically geospatial video, which are camcorders that have internal GPS sensors. And we mount them to the vehicle, two on either side, and we drive through. Directly after the disaster, we drive the damage path, and then every six months or so, we'll return and drive the exact same path and monitor the recovery over time. Because the cameras are relatively cheap, it means that anybody can go and collect data, which means that the data collection is now in your own hands you're no longer sort of reliant on maybe a contract or even something like Google Street View, where you may have one day to pass, but that's it. Most recovery data is not this fine scale, so that's one of the unique aspects of our research is that it is such a fine scale, it is house by house, rather than block or uh, neighborhood level. So we can label on the map whether a structure is under construction, if it's currently occupied, if it's not occupied but is complete, so it's a vacant home that's for sale, things like that. And then we can map those patterns across the landscape. So several different disasters we've collected video data for. On tornadoes, we've actually had five different tornado events. The major ones have included Tuscaloosa and Joplin. I had a PhD student who was going down to collect the latest round of video recovery data for Joplin, and it was only a few days after the, the Oklahoma Moore tornado. So myself and another student went down approximately a week, 10 days later, two more to collect uh, the video damage data for that Moore tornado. In this case, we had a set of seven cameras and we had them all connected to different sides of the car and we had them all running and collecting GPS as well as video data and then we drove around in the field and in this kind of situation that was somewhat of a, a difficult thing because on a lot of streets you had massive dump trucks along with cars that uh, were totaled and sitting on the side of the road. If you look at just the damage aspects of a tornado Within a tornado path, although we, we talk about it's three quarters of a mile wide, it's half a mile wide, when you map it out at the fine scale as we do, you can see that there are damage differences on a single street segment. So although we are within this tornado path, depending on which side of the street you're on, depending on whether you're slightly up or down slope, if there is some sort of terrain, depending on how your house is in relation to other buildings around, these can predict the type of damage you're going to sustain. So that type of real fine scale analysis has not really been done uh, previously. There has been some work on, on looking at fine scale maps, but not to the extent that we're, we're doing that type of mapping here. We can find trends um, over the landscape and see what areas are recovering more quickly than others. What areas aren't recovering you know, or is it little to no recovery at all in certain neighborhoods? And then we can then start to dig deeper and figure out, okay, what are the reasons why certain areas rebuild quicker than others? So the lessons that we learn in Joplin about recovery, we can then apply to more Oklahoma and say, this worked in Joplin or this didn't work in Joplin, so you should or shouldn't do this. You know, again, every city, every neighborhood is going to be different, but over the large scale, there's you know, there's going to be things and patterns that we can apply from one disaster to another. Now, if you can just imagine, if you're a family that has suffered severe loss, well, you've lost your house, you've lost maybe a lot of personal belongings, you've probably lost your neighbors, you've lost that whole sort of cohesiveness of the, of the street, of the neighborhood. So if we can help speed that process up, or maybe guide policy in terms of what are good policies compared to bad policies, then hopefully we can lessen that period between disaster and when the family is back as it should be, as it was before the disaster itself.